So what I want to talk to you about today is uh, from the sea to the land beyond. Um, as Chris said, my name is Mark Atkin. I'm a director of Crossover Labs. Um, and this is a collaboration between Crossover and the Sheffield Dockfest, produced by myself and Heather Kroll, who's sitting over there. How to make a multi-platform film in just four months. So towards the end of last year, um, the Arts Council of England and the BBC issued this challenge to artists and filmmakers, realizing that there's amazing archive material that sits uh, in the archives of arts organizations all across the country. And what they wanted to do was to get artists to reinterpret this material and make it relevant to contemporary audiences and deliver it to them on uh, the digital devices that everybody uses these days. So the phones, tablets, computers, and connected TVs. So Heather and I just love this band, British Sea Power. Um, we've been to see them loads of times, and they love the countryside, they love the coast, and they love all things British. And we thought, wouldn't it be great if we got them to compose the soundtrack to a film made of archive material depicting the British coast. We imagined something that would be lyrical, emotional, nostalgic, a kind of a meditation on British identity. Because everyone in Britain lives reasonably close to the sea. No one lives more than 100 miles away from the coast. And we go there for leisure. We go there to work. Um, we go there to meditate and to commune with nature. And the coast defines us as a nation, and it defines our psyche as individuals as well. And we, we got the sort of idea that this kind of a collaboration might be a good idea for the space. But then, of course, we needed to find a director um, who would help us realize this vision. So we got in contact with Penny Wilcock. We love Penny Wilcock. She's one of the greatest um, living filmmakers, British filmmaker. Um, to the extent that she's being given the Dockfest Innovation Award this year. Well, she was in Birmingham making a film with gangs in Birmingham, uh, one mile away. The film is now completed, and you can see it in Dockfest. <laughs> and she said this, the chance to make a film where nobody wanted to kill or arrest me was pure bliss. <laughs> so we had our dream team. Um, we put in the application. And anyone who's put in an application of funding knows this feeling. Uh, we were told that by 5 o'clock on the 21st of February, if we were going to be successful in funding, we would hear. Um, at 16 minutes past 5, when we were all howling and sobbing under our desks, this email came through. Game on. <laughs> so now we had to um, find the material we we're going to make the film out of. Uh, so, we went to the BBC archive, that was our first starting point, um, and we're in the scoping phase of this project. Uh, the aim is to have a film that we'll show on the 13th of June, that's tomorrow, um, <laughs> and we're already at the end of February, it's not a long time. So, uh, we started sorting through this stuff and it quickly became apparent that rights were just a nightmare, really murky. Uh, sometimes it, a it might belong to this person here or it could belong to this company there. Um, they were allocated years ago, before all the screens that we're using these days. Sometimes, um, if you can actually see a person's face um, in a scene, it's your job to actually see if you can track that person down and ask for their permission for that image to be used. Um, and it was obvious that this was really going to take a long time. It would probably take six months just researching this stuff. Um, and we didn't have that. Uh, what the hell were we going to do? Um, then, sort of like a bolt from the blue and an angel descending from heaven, someone from the BFI, the British Film Institute, got in contact with us and said that they'd been steadily, for some years now, clearing and cataloguing 100 years of film material of the British coast. <laughs> <laughs> so what was that material? Well, it was stuff like this from the Mitchell and Kenyon Library. Mitchell and Kenyon were showmen um, from the north of England, and they filmed the northern way of life, like this wonderful um, extreme sport of swimming in a top hat and tails. <laughs> and, um, and they would show it in fairgrounds. It's absolutely beautiful stuff. And then films like this from the Central Office of Information, where filmmakers like Peter Greenaway started their career. 
these beautiful films that depicted regional ways of life uh, and primary industries like coal mining and shipbuilding. And as we started putting all of this stuff together, you know, with Penny, obviously, we realized that we're sort of ditching the whole idea of creating this sort of lyrical and romantic expression of British identity. And what was really emerging was an incredibly moving portrait of, um, of the changing nature of British identity over a whole century through this beautiful, beautiful 35 millimeter film made by real filmmakers. And as we carried on in this process, uh, we discovered a couple of things that inevitably, when we get to the 1980s, the quality just falls off a cliff with the onset of, uh, of VHS. And those primary industries that were depicted in those films are now museum items as well. And that as that responsibility for depicting our national way of life um, became more that of the individual as we record the world around us on the, on the devices that we have in our pocket these days, that responsibility has now moved from the state to the individual. And rather than having this shared celebration of national identity that was expressed through film, uh, where we would all know about the lifestyles of, of, of people who worked in the mines um, and who, who built the ships, all the, that's been completely replaced by people just filming the world around them and posting it on their Facebook timeline. So we thought, well, wouldn't it be great if we could actually allow everybody to access this amazing stuff that, ex that exists in the uh, British Film Institute Library, 100 years of film, allow people to select a part of the coast that really means something to them, uh, whether they were born there or used to go on holiday there, um, and to then... Um, make their own personalised postcard from the coast by selecting bits of film and then adding in little bits of music from British Sea Power <laughs> and then writing, of course, their own message. and then posting it on their own Facebook timeline, or tweeting it or emailing it. So as we were building that tool with Illumina Digital, um, of course, Penny and Alex Fry, the editor, were, were making the film, and the band were composing the music. And then towards the end of this creative collaboration, they came together um, in a castle in Kent. And here is Penny with the film in the back, and the band still composing music there together. And what I'd like to do now is just show you a little bit from the beginning of the film so you can see um, what that collaboration looks and sounds like. Um, and can you roll that film, please?
Did you see the guy who forgot his umbrella and he had to go back? <laughs> so very shortly after that, uh, then the beach became a place where people practiced for war, before it became a place of leisure again, and so that cycle continued. So the film starts in Blackpool in, 1800, in 1900 and finishes in Blackpool in 2000. Um, and that's just an impression of what this collaboration will be like, because actually we don't know, because um, the music was being written until just about yesterday, and the band, will be, <laughs> the band will be performing it live for the first time here in the Crucible next door um, tomorrow at 6 o'clock. Um, so now all that remains for me to do is to send you my postcard <laughs> um, and encourage you to make your own, and to look at the film that we're going to film uh, the live experience tomorrow and stream it on the space so you can watch it there on thespace.org. Thank you very much. <laughs>